Inivalua youth participated in a fish camp at Reindeer Station. Along with language instruction and inside learning activities, the children went out in the boats to set and pull up nets. They were taught how to fillet fish for frying as well as how to make cuts for hang drying. So we just want kids and adults to be out here on the land and know how it is to pick berries and catch fish and cut them up, show them what it's like to live on the land, pretty much. So it's basically what we're doing out here. There's Sally and John Day. Sally's cooking here. John's helping out here. There's Dale Rogers. He's a wildlife monitor. And then Lillian Elias. She's instructor of the traditional skills in sewing and whatnot. She just showed us how to cut the fish this afternoon. And um, then there's the kids here. So we have started our sewing kits with Lillian. And I think one kid's already done her sewing kit. Um, but we're going to be finishing that by Saturday. And we've also started, we set out a fishnet yesterday and brought it out last night um, and we caught eight fish. We're gonna start berry picking tomorrow hopefully, maybe out at Yaya Lakes and Blueberry Hill and see if there's any good berries to pick. And then there will just be more of um, finishing our sewing kits and setting up some more fish nets and seeing what other type of fish we're going to catch. Um, I think I would say to anyone who's watching that it's just a great source to be out here and either if you already knew what it's like to be within your culture and live it it's still dying today so it's always good to come out here and reconnect back with your traditional ways and I think for kids it's a good source too because they don't know a lot of it and Probably most of them are just learning, you know, how to do all this stuff out here that we're doing, like cutting fish and all that. Um, I would say join and learn where you're coming from. It's fun. Different willows and on the plants, because it's easier to talk talk about medicine, that traditional medicine when you have it with you. It would be juicy. It's sweeter in the spring. In the spring, it's sweeter.
we just peel the uh, skin off. Okay, what I do is I fill my pot up again with water. And then we just add these into it. Break them up and add them in. If you really want a strong dose, you put more in it. Just put it on high until it starts boiling. As soon as it starts boiling, let it boil for about maybe half an hour. This is really good for arthritis, they say. Talking to one of the elders. And another elder asked me, can we drink it? I said, I don't know. But you know, since we suck the juice out of it, we probably can drink it. Yeah. When I start getting arthritis, I'll try it. Once it's finished boiling for about half an hour, you just take it off the stove and cool it off. And you just drain it in. Or uh, strain it. Day cloths are really good to use, or a cheesecloth. They take all the, you see all the uh, soil on it. Mm -hmm. This takes time to do. Like you, you could have your whole afternoon doing these. Like look how long our ancestors lived, or our grandparents. You know, they yeah. didn't have the. Uh, medication from the hospital or the doctors. Yeah. Freeze them and just take them out when you need them. Yeah, and that's what I that's what I do with the berry juice. See, look, they got real maple leaves on them. Maybe there's quite a big one. Yeah. I could make about two of those bottles. Yeah, you just boil them in water. And it's springtime? Yeah. Or even summertime. Their leaves are really rare around here. Yeah. They have maple leaves on them. You can see the maple leaf shape of the leaf. And this medicine is used for eczema, which is really good for eczema. A story was told to me by a friend who heard from an elder that if you boil it and let someone who has uh, eczema, you let them bath in it every night for two weeks and it should clear up the eczema. So we need 10 cups of water for this. This is two plants. Things cleared right up. Like it might look nice. I mean, it might look... Now, fall one hail. Could make about 12. I want to make a big batch and you two could take some ointment home. So what we do is we just put something down. So I put a whole thank you.
I'm gonna use a knife. We need it to get all the tree gum off. I like to use this because it don't stick to the to this plastic here. And then I use Ziploc bag for to close it. The clear ones like this are good for uh, ointment. Also good for the uh, for drinking too. If you make the liquid one juice. The darker it is, the more stronger it is. This part here, I'm going to be making uh, ointment, twig of ointment with Use some for sores or rash. It's sticky, it's really sticky. But it really works. It sucks out the um, infection. Yeah, without boiling them, you can chew them a little bit and then put it into your teeth that has a hole or put it around your teeth for the abscess. It'll just suck out all that infection. Our land really supplies everything. Take these off, break the br one branch off like that and just throw them on top of the stove and it just brings a really really nice smell and it also cleans the air I have some tree gum here you can have any kind of pot you got to keep using it for more tree gum nothing else you add some butter to melt and the butter really is just to coat the pan so it don't really the tree gum don't really stick because it does get really sticky Unless you have a really big pot making it, don't have your uh, heat way up. And pour the tree in. If you under boil it, then it's going to be really watery. See, just a few seconds and it just kind of starts to mm -hmm. Oh, it does, but if you smell it all day, <laughs> tell you the smell stays in your house all day. And this. Once it cool off, it'll turn into the... Is it a Yeah. When I was small, we used to chew it. We used to stay in the bush. And mom used to let us always chew it. Remember, I, can, I can't remember being sick as a child. This year, Ocean's Day was celebrated in Politoc NWT, and you better believe our cameras were there to check it out. My name is Darcy McNichol. I'm a fisheries biologist with uh, DFO Winnipeg, and I travel up to Politoc every summer to look at the coastal fish community. And my role as a scientist is to gather information about the ecosystem and collect as much knowledge as I can and give that to management and policy so they can build a monitoring plan and a management plan for the Darnley Bay MPA and now the AN MPA. Uh, so I've been coming to Polytuck uh, since 2014 and I've been collaborating with Arctic Char Stock Assessment Programs as well as the Beluga Monitoring Programs here to get a very holistic sense of what the ecosystem components are, uh, particularly with respect to the fish community, which is my area of expertise. Let's give a good, big hand to all the guests that have come to celebrate with Polytuck. 
think, yeah, you know, we've got no, absolutely no protection on the west side of us. So we started developing uh, options in terms of what the area will be. We did some communications or consultations within our community. I think initially we had uh, up to five options in terms of where the area, what it might look like. Eh? And uh, through work with the working group and the community agencies, uh, right up to the federal departments, we come up with uh, the, the present area. Uh, well, this has been a great day to come and uh, just celebrate the area. It's uh, the Darnley Bay MPA is is a beautiful place. I've spent a number of weeks there, and it, it changes so much from one end to the other. The tip of Cape Perry is very striking. It's got big bluffs and bird life there, and then it changes as you move further south. So to have a day dedicated to celebrating that is really special. And it's also very special that this is one of the first MPAs that traditional knowledge was included in its development. So by incorporating what we know locally from observations and from the traditional knowledge, we can use what the community has um, from their time on the land and to build the scientific questions out of that. And we can validate one information against the other with two very different types of information that are both incredibly valuable. Happy Ocean Day! I did not believe myself and I along with the other negotiators in the community that we should be moving ahead on such an aggressive agreement unless those resources were in place. And I'm really pleased to say not only with the MPA here, but the Beluga Protected Area has funding so people can take part. So for all of you, for being what you are, thank you. You make my life very much a, a, a wonderful time over a long period of time. And I look at people who are just little kids when we started this whole operation and I can't believe it. You're all beautiful, you're wonderful, and always remember, you can do anything you set your mind to. I danced to like you could see like a caribou going this way and another one going that side and a hunter is on top of the mountain he's looking down at the animals looking down like that and you know, when he puts his arms up this way he starts seeing the whole land you see his animals right down there when he goes down to get the uh, get the animal he cuts it up and goes back on top of the mountain and he started dancing the song Yulim Nawani means at the top of the mountain. Drum dancing is my favorite. Yeah. It's because um, I am, I'm always happy when I'm drum dancing. I like to show it. Yeah. <laughs>
traveling since they started. I think I don't remember the years again. Maybe later in, uh, in 2000, there's some yeah the Hanover I think in Germany was one of the main one of the first big trips that I've seen, and that was awesome. You know, just I think that's what drew a lot of the others in is to see what was going on. You know, and then not only that they could they they, they were going to be able to continue the cultural and traditional dancing and stuff. But the trips take advantage of going out there and doing these things for the rest of the world. You know, that's awesome. Eh? Uh, they had a chance more recently to go to Yellowknife on uh, on uh, the Prince William and Kate to that, and uh, just I don't know how long they were speaking about it after the trip. You know, <laughs> that was awesome. That was really cool. You know, so yeah, the group. I'm really proud of the group. It's just. Overwhelming how much of them when you get them together in in, a, in one place. Uh, wow, you got to think, geez, we got that many young people in town. 